Hello scholars, my name is Dr. Karis Dillon and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. In this video, we're going to talk about borderline personality disorder, which is part of the DSM-5. When a person is diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, they must first show a pattern of interpersonal relationships that have not been stable. They also will have issues with self-esteem as well as impulsiveness that began early in adulthood, and they will have at least five of the following symptoms. Number one, there are desperate attempts by the individual to avoid abandonment, which is either real or it's not real. Number two, there's a history of the individual having problems with interpersonal relationships, friendships, family, because they've first tend to put that person on a pedestal and then they'll end up devaluing that person later on. So they go back and forth between these extremes of elevating the people in their lives and then devaluing them. Number three, they have an unstable self-image and their sense of self is usually off. So they'll either believe themselves to be wonderful, giving, um, attractive, and then they'll think they're bad or horrible, this kind of, again, this back and forth. They may be impulsive and do things that can bring trouble, including spending too much money, reckless driving, eating too much at a sitting, have troubles with substance abuse, or even partake in unsafe sex. Number five, they can self-mutilate or will have suicidal behavior, including threats, of suicide, gestures toward suicide, or suicidal behavior. Number six, their mood tends to not be stable. And so they'll have like bouts of anxiety, uh, definitely irritability, or they can feel outside of their body or outside of themselves. And this can last anywhere from hours to a few days. Seven, they'll have feelings of emptiness much of the time. Eight, they may have times with really intense anger or inappropriate bouts of anger or have tr lots of trouble controlling their anger. They'll have lots of fights and you'll see their temper come out quite often. And then number nine, they may experience paranoia related to stress or again, they might disassociate themselves from the situation or from themselves, their own person. Individuals with borderline personality disorder believe that they are going to be abandoned. And whether this fear is realistic or not, this is a constant concern. They believe that separation or rejection is always coming. And so they're trying to avoid it before it happens. So this idea of abandonment can impact a person's self-image um, it can affect their cognition, which means their thinking process. It can affect their mood, and it especially affects their behavior. Individuals with BPD are extremely sensitive to the people around them and to the environment around them. Um, they can be set off when asked for time off from a situation because their fear of abandonment comes in, and then they get irritable, um, anxiety-ridden. If their plans change or plans are canceled, this can definitely set off the person. Individuals with BPD can believe they're about to be abandoned. They even will get angry if a person is a few minutes late. When individuals with BPD are left or abandoned or perceived as being abandoned, they feel that it's because they're bad or a bad person. Persons with BPD prefer to be around others. They don't want to be alone. So when they are alone, they may take part in self-mutilation or their suicidal behaviors may come out. Individuals with BPD tend to have very emotionally intense relationships that are unstable. So when they first get together with somebody, it can be very good because they put, tend to put their caregiver or their lover um, on a pedestal, 
They elevate them. They may share very intimate details about their life with that person very early in the relationship so they can perceive that they're much closer to the person than they really are. But after a period of time, when that person doesn't do what they kind of expect them to do, they will begin to devalue that person because they don't feel that they care enough about them. Um, and that's based on what they give to that other person and they don't see that coming back to them. So they wonder why that's not there. Individuals with BPD can and will easily nurture others, but they have that expectations that when they want their own needs met, they demand that other person to give that to them. The manner in which they view others can change on a dime from a person that is supporting to them to a person that's punishing them. Individuals with BPD can also shift their self-image very quickly, as well as their goals, their career aspirations, as, and their life values. They can shift their sexual identity quickly. They, have, they can switch the different friends that they hang out with, as well as their careers. So you can see somebody who, you know, at one step is a very needy person and then they can shift themselves very quickly into being an advocate or avenging some type of wrong. Um, there are times when they feel like they're invisible or that they don't exist. They most often feel like this when they don't feel like they have a meaningful relationship or support in their life. This is when you'll see them do worse in their school or in their job. For individuals with BPD, completed suicides will take place in about 8 to 10 percent of those individuals with the disorder. Much of the time, the suicide was not intended, but they were not found as they imagined they might be, that the person would come in and save them, and sometimes that doesn't happen. They may have a hope that somebody will magically find them before they die, and nobody does. Suicidal ideation is common as well as self-mutilation, especially when the person is feeling uh, that they might be in a disassociative state. It is normal for someone with BPD to experience periods of despair, panic, or anger. The person does not tend to feel better, even if they have some days where there's some satisfaction or well-being, they're still feeling pretty low. It is normal for someone with BPD to become bored and look for something to do. It's also normal for them to ha have a lot of sarcasm or bitterness. They may withhold feelings from others or seem uncaring, um, and this is due to their fear of abandonment. Feelings of guilt and shame may come after these other feelings. So during stress, persons with BPD may feel paranoid or may feel uh, dissociated from others. If a caregiver provides nurturance, though, they may experience a kind of remission of the symptoms. Someone with BPD may undermine themselves right about when they're about to reach a goal. So say somebody has gone to college, has done you know fairly well with college, and they're about to graduate, they might actually self-sabotage that graduation or if they're told that therapy is going really well, they might sabotage it so it's not going well. Same thing with a relationship. If a relationship is going really well, they may sabotage that so it's not going really well. Individuals might feel better with pets or inanimate objects versus people, uh, especially during times of great stress. And if they have depression with BPD, they're more likely to die of suicide. Individuals with BPD are more likely than others to lose their jobs, um, to stop their own further education, and are more likely to have separation and divorce than others. Sometimes they have a history of physical or sexual abuse, uh, the early loss of a parent, or hostile conflict that comes about within the youth. Disorders that tend to occur at the same time as BPD include major depression, substance abuse disorder, other personality disorders, ADHD, and bipolar disorder. The disorder is found in 1.6 to 5.9% of the population. It's also seen in 20% of psychiatric inpatients. 
Symptoms will sometimes decrease as the person gets into their 30s and 40s. It's very normal for histrionic personality disorder to coexist with borderline personality disorder. Okay, well that is the end of our video on borderline personality disorder. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate all of you and I will talk with you soon.